Model Steam Engines for Beginners, Part 11, How a Mechanical Lubricator Works. I've had a couple of recent requests to show how a mechanical lubricator works, so here we go. This is one that I've had for a few years and it's never been good. There's quite a lot of play in the shaft that drives the pump. So I'm about to dismantle it. The first thing to take off is the arm. These lubricators work in a very simple way. There's a central ratchet and two poles, one on the arm and one on the body of the lubricator. And with this arrangement, the shaft can only rotate in one direction, which is what we need it to do. And with the arm removed and turned round, you can see the pole on the arm itself. This lubricator is called a ratchet type lubricator for obvious reasons. It has a ratchet. And this ratchet shaft is very loose, which is one of the reasons I think it doesn't work properly. This is a very common type of mechanical lubricator, but there are other types. There are lubricators with very similar internal mechanics to this one, but using a one-way clutch instead of a ratchet. There are also some types which use an eccentric on the shaft that depresses a spring-loaded pump piston. You can clearly see from the current clip on screen that this uses an oscillating cylinder as a pump, pretty much like on a toy steam engine. And I think it would be possible to make this run as a steam engine by fitting a flywheel in place of the ratchet and then feeding some compressed air or steam into the outlet. But I want it to be a pump, and it's not been a very good pump up to this time. This video is not going to show me putting it back together, I'm just showing the principle of operation. I will later on modify it slightly and make it work better. And when I finally find the time to put it back together, I'll probably also make a video of it as well. Using a couple of spanners, I'm removing the main bearing assembly. This is a piece of brass hexagon that's threaded, and it has a lock nut which tightens it onto the case, and it also threads into the pump itself. As I mentioned earlier, this pump doesn't run very well, and I think that most of the problem is the fact that the hole down the centre of this brass part is too large, and this allows the shaft to wobble about, and in turn the ratchet moves around. If you watch the beginning of the video, you can see this clearly as I'm moving the ratchet lever. The part that I'm currently removing is a very important part of the lubricator. This is a clack valve or one-way valve. It has a stainless steel ball inside it with a spring to hold it in place. Without this, nothing will happen and steam would blow back into the lubricator. It is also very important to have a second non-return valve where the oil goes into the cylinder. As I move all the pieces out of the way, you can now see the little oscillating cylinder. Quite a nice piece of model engineering really. A model in its own right. As I temporarily put this back together, you can clearly see the mechanical function. The main shaft is threaded into the crank web. If you put it in reverse, it will unscrew itself. But you can clearly see the little piston going up and down in the cylinder. The one flaw with this design is that the oil flow is non adjustable, unless you put some sort of a bypass valve in, which is very fiddly. The spring loaded piston type are usually internally adjustable for oil flow. But with this type, you have to limit the travel of the arm. These kind of pumps are generally driven off a valve rod and sometimes with a reduction linkage. The general rule is for each revolution of the crankshaft, the ratchet needs to be clicked over just by one notch. Any more than that, and the lubricator will over oil the cylinder. And as I remove the nut and the washer and the spring, here is the oscillating cylinder. So here's how it works as the piston goes up and down in the cylinder, this small hole in the cylinder body passes across the ports. First of all, it sucks oil in through this slot. Then in the part of the cycle where the cylinder oscillates, it pumps the oil out of this hole into the spring-loaded clack valve, which in turn pumps it to the cylinder. I'm going to put the pump back together now before I lose any of the parts. For every revolution of the pump crankshaft, it picks up a tiny drop of oil, and then it pushes out a tiny drop of oil into the pipe to the cylinder. The spring-loaded clack is just to stop the steam pressure from the cylinder blowing back through the pump. Occasionally these clack valves can fail, usually because the ball is not seating onto the port face inside the clack valve, and that's usually due to some impurity in the oil tank, like a small lump of coal or some ash from the chimney if it's a locomotive. I've found from my experience that in practice these clack valves are very well made and rarely fail. For now I'm just going to screw this back into the bottom of the pump body so I don't lose it. In this clip you can clearly see just how much play there is in the crankshaft of the pump. So all I need to do is just remake the threaded part, making sure that the diameter of the hole in that matches the crankshaft of the pump. 
The complexity of mechanical lubricators often put people off, but they really are technically better than a displacement lubricator shown here. On the plus side, a displacement lubricator is a fit and forget device, and once you get used to how far to turn the little wheel to regulate the oil supply, they can be very reliable. But on the downside, you never really know how much oil you've got left in the lubricator. Mechanical lubricators are fine if they're working okay. If using a ratchet type mechanical lubricator, I would always recommend taking the time to make sure there's not too much arm travel. It's not a massive problem if you over oil your engine, but it is if you sat behind a steam locomotive getting a face full of oil, not to mention the cost of the extra oil. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful.